Eat, sleep, bet, repeat. That's how we get down on the opening line at EliteSportsBetting.com. I'll be your host, Benny Ricciardi, and today we're going to be talking a little bit of a little bit of EPL soccer action for this weekend. So, you know, this is actually a busy time of the year for soccer coming up. We got a lot of tournaments, a lot of things going on. And whenever we're talking soccer, I bring in our soccer expert over here at the elite family of companies, elite fantasy, elite sports betting, our main man, Nick Frazier. You know him affectionately as the Duke. So what's going on today, bro? B -b -b Benny and the Jets. What's up, my guy? Benny, I'm feeling good today, man. How you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling a little under the weather. We got, got a lot of content coming out here. It's been a busy couple of days for me. And I didn't have any coffee yet today, but apparently you did because you're bringing it today. So I'm going to let you carry the show for today. Cup number three right here. Day got off to a hot start. I got a splinter in my thumb. Okay. I don't know if it's a hair splinter or an actual splinter, but tough start to the day. And then I walk outside, you know, to check out how the car is going, get that started, warm it up a little bit because it's actually cold here in Atlanta. It yeah. was 30. So, yeah. you know, you, I'm yeah, sure you it, it, it was 16 in New Jersey. So I don't feel that bad for you. <laughs> So then I hear uh, just a rumbling outside. My water heater's leaking, so I have no hot water. Well, that's not good. So right after this, I got someone come to hopefully fix that because cold showers are no bueno, my friend. Yeah, no, I mean, there's nothing like a new hot water heater and uh, a nice big bill right before Christmas. So. You know, the good thing is we're probably getting a little too granular here, but I pay this monthly stipend for this home insurance appliance thing. Right. I've just been throwing away for three years. So I want this thing to be totally broken. Give me a damn brand new one. Yeah, actually, you know what? You might as well. That's the whole point of insurance, that when crazy stuff happens, somebody else pays for it. That's why, you it pay them. Yeah, that's why you pay them a couple bucks every month. So hopefully you get back to even on that one. And, uh, you know. <laughs> I get some winners this weekend, right? Yeah, that's, a, that's what I was going to say. If not, we're going to need to get some winners there to make sure that, uh, you know, Duke can take some hot showers this week. So let's start like we always did, Duke. I mean, we, we talk all the time about the early game on Saturday, which is great oh. for us in the, you know, on the East Coast where – I can put this bet in when I'm done making my lineups for NFL on Friday night and updating all that stuff and sitting in chat and doing all that. I can put this bet in, go to sleep. And even if I don't wake up in time, I know I can wake up and I already have something to sweat in the morning. So Everton Arsenal, the early game this week, right? It is. Yeah. 7.30 a.m. A all tradition right. unlike any other. Of course, we're going to bet this game. And you know what? Let's switch it up a little bit. I'm feeling in a giving mood. It's the holiday season. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you all three of my bets. We may actually get okay. to four on this show. I'm going to give you all three of my bets right up front, and then we'll tell you the why on the back end. So we are going to bet the early game. And the total sitting at three right now, we'll talk about why maybe I'm not touching that. I'm just paying the juice and taking over two and a half. Seems like an absolute lock to me. So that's bet number one. Bet okay. number two, you can get Burnley draw no bet at plus 105 right now. That's a lock. Uh, Man United to win on Sunday is minus 125 right now. Again, I'm a huge wait for team news kind of guy. Burnley plus 105 is what I'm locking in today. Mm -hmm. Everton Arsenal, I don't think will move much and we're already paying juice there. Man United could move a little bit, but I don't think anything significant from team news is going to move that line too much. But those are my three bets for the show today. Now, did you say, you said the Draw no bet on Burnley, right? Are you taking draw no bet on Man U, or are you going straight for the win? Straight win. All right, yeah, I was going to say, because I'm looking at straight win at minus 127 for them, which seems a little low. But we'll get to that. Let's start, let's start at the beginning. So why are we going over two and a half in Everton Arsenal? Sure. First of all, you guys are welcome. You don't have to sit here. We want you to sit here and watch, but if you have to go – you know, you got kids running around. They're off school. Now you're ready. Just go put no, those – stay here in. and watch. We're not going to be that long. Come on. <laughs> all right, so – Reason being for this game, number one, Everton's at home, mm. Arsenal away. Everton's plus 130, Arsenal one, plus 190. Both still working with interim managers. Yep. Duncan Ferguson obviously in charge of Everton and Freddie Youngberg in charge of Arsenal. Club legends, it's kind of funny how they bring them back to kind of soothe things over. But mm -hmm. this can go one of two ways. I think, first of all, both these teams – actually, today, Arteta was confirmed as the manager. I doubt he takes over tomorrow, so he'll probably watch from the stands. And Carlo Ancelotti – world-renowned manager is going to take over Everton. Hasn't signed on the dotted line yet, I don't think. But more likely than not, this is the last game for these players with their interim managers. So it can go one of two ways. Do they play like crazy, play for the patch, play for you know the badge on the front, not the name on the back, mm -hmm. and, and really give 110%? Or do they say, this is the last game, I'm playing with this guy. Maybe that sprint, that 70-yard sprint in the 70th minute to track back you just don't feel like making anymore, right? Because you're not trying to impress this guy. It's the next guy coming in. So are they trying to prove that they deserve their place? Or are they saying this is the last game with these guys? What are we going to do? Mm -hmm. So 
for that reason, it, people love to score goals. It's way more easy to spend that energy trying to go score goals than it is to track back and do the work defensively. Com- combine that with the fact that Arsenal's back line is in shambles. Everton's back line's having issues. We have Leighton Bain and Dina rotating in and out at left back. I think there's going to be goals in this game. I don't know that we'll get to four, and I don't want to pay the juice that's required to get the three just to get our money back if we get there. So that's why I'm paying the juice for the two and a half. Yeah. Now, what do you see in the juice on the two and a half? At? What is it, like minus 150, minus 160? It's um, No, it's less than that. Okay. Oh, sorry. On the one minus two and a half, it's like minus 170 is what I got. Okay. Yeah. I, I see a minus 160 here is what I was looking at. So, all right. If you can even get it a little better, that, that'll be nice. Um, yeah. But you don't mind paying the juice and, and, you know, not making as much there because you think that's, a, that's the way it's going to wind up, like a 2-1 game, I assume? Exactly. And the way I'm playing it, Benny, is, you know, a, an early goal changes everything in, in the sport of soccer. So, I'm, gonna, I'm the crazy guy who wakes his butt up and, you know, plays DFS, watches this game start to finish. So if we get an early game or I see something happening in the first 15, 20 minutes that's going to push this to that over three, then I'll hit it live. I'm just locking okay. in that two and a half before the game uh, to make sure we can get down on that. Yeah, and, you know, we talk about this all the time in a lot of the other sports when we do these videos that, you know, live in-game betting is offering a lot of value. And, you know, especially if you have an idea of – if, if this happens, I want to be on this side of it. And you, you know, you have a number you're looking for and you and search the books because remember, you know, sometimes on these in games, what you're getting offered at one site may be much different than what you're getting offered at another site. So if there's something that you're looking for, like Duke is saying, the over three, you know, go check as many different sites as you're able to go on and, and make bets from because you may be getting, you know, minus 110 in one place and minus 150 in another place. So put your money where you're going to get the best return for it. Something that we talk about in a lot of different sports here. And I think, you know, there's, there's for me personally, I feel I have an advantage over the book with live lines. Now, if you're watching it on TV, there's no way to be exactly up to the second. So if you see a guy getting a breakaway, it's probably already happened. He's probably missed, or they took the line off the board, something like that. So that's not what I'm talking about with hitting live betting. But if I see, a certain player, like let's say Bernard is tearing up Hector Bellerin or something this Saturday morning, and there's a particular advantage in game that Mm -hmm. I see that they're exploiting or, you know, a goalie looks particularly shaky on the first cross in, maybe he bobbles it or who knows what. Those are the types of little things I'm looking for live where we can grab some value where, Mm -hmm. you know, you look at even, uh, you know, this weekend or this, uh, excuse me, the 1230 game, which is a game we're not going to be betting, Leicester, uh, Man City, Man City's juiced to the hilt. I think they're going to win based on their form and Lester getting decent results, but not playing well, but I'm not paying minus two sixty five on a game that should be closer to minus one fifty. Yeah. But if we get in game and I see that Lester's really looking bad, maybe then I can hit the minus one and a half or minus one or something like that. So yeah. it's a way to grab an opportunity that you want to attack, but you just can't find value on as well. Yeah. And especially like games like that. I like when it goes like the 30th minute and it's goalless because then it goes from minus 265 all the way down to minus 170 or minus 180 or something like that, you know, and you could hit it in game and you're still expecting it to only be maybe a goal here or a goal there. That's going to decide it. So you can definitely get some better lines in game than you can pre flop sometimes. And that pretty much stands true for every sport that we talk about. Now here's an interesting one though. You like Burnley on the draw, no bet line. Burnley on the three-way line is actually the bigger dog to Bournemouth, who's only – Bournemouth, I think, is plus 140 I'm looking at. Burnley's plus 200 there. So why are we kind of bucking the, uh, you know, bucking the odds and going against them here? So it, here's the thing, and we may actually sprinkle a little bit on the money line. That's, that's a little okay. teaser. But okay. for Bournemouth, let me just read this list of players. Nathan Ake, starting center back, lifeblood of the defense, out. Adam Smith, starting right back, out. Steve Cook, another defender, out. Callum Wilson, their best forward, even though he hasn't been scoring goals, out. Josh King, a late fitness test. He's their second best forward, their designated penalty kick taker, bless you. He's probably out, more than likely not going to play. Stanislaus is out. Harry Wilson, scorer of banger goals from 35 yards. (laughs) He's out. This is the team that's already devoid of talent. And they're riddled with injuries, not to mention their form has been hit or miss all season, okay. eatering on the edge of terrible. Here's why I'm not going all in Burnley money line. Burnley struggles to score goals away from home, mm-hmm. right? They aren't exactly setting the world on fire themselves. Prior to their win against Newcastle, they had three straight losses. So neither of these teams are in really good form. I think if you have all these injuries with Bournemouth, mm-hmm. 
and can eliminate the potential of a draw ruining your three-way bet. Right. And you're still getting plus odds on a team I like to win the game anyway. Give me that value. To me, that is the safer route where you're eliminating one-third of the outcomes and the more likely outcome gets you plus 105 on your money. I like that. I like that a lot, and I like the explanation of it as well. Now, the third one you talked about was uh, Man United. Now, this one, we're going on the three-way line for them to win. And I have no problem with this. As you guys know, I've been picking on Watford both in fantasy and in sports betting all season long. I think this is one of the worst teams in the Premier League right now. They don't score. They give up a lot of goals. And that's a great recipe to be taken against them. Um, So, I mean, again, I know you're a little bit of a Man U homer. It's like like the way people take my Jets takes, you know, because they know that, uh, you know, I'm going to sugarcoat it a little bit. But um, we cashed that ticket last week, didn't we? That we that we did, and I'm gonna say I kind of feel like at minus 127, this is a really good line, and another one that I plan on cashing this week. So I'm definitely gonna be on this man you side. Tell everybody why you like it so much. Yeah, and you know what? It's a good point, Benny. I said it last week, but I'll say it again. I'm here to make money, right? I I stopped betting on Ohio State because I'm a huge Ohio State fan because I was sick of them winning by, you know, 15 points when the line was 17, and me being pissed mm-hmm. off after the game. I bet on what I'm going to win on Manchester United to win this game at minus 125. And again, this line stuck out to me a little bit, but I dug deeper into it and I actually had it about where it's at now. So I don't see there's a ton of value on the line. I like them to win the game. Manchester United struggle to break down opponents who sit deep. They do really well against the Chelsea's, you know, the Manchester cities, Mm -hmm. Leicester's who are going to try to play, want the ball more, are going to attack and leave those large gaps in behind. When they've played teams and had 55% possession or more, they are yet to win a game this season. So that is the worry here. Watford, they've shown flashes in their last three games. Two, you know, basically they had two decent litmus tests, right? Leicester and Liverpool. Both were away contests. They're at home in this game, so it's not apples to apples. Mm -hmm. Lost both those games two to zero. Leicester City had had 63% possession. Man City had 67% possession. But in between those games... They played Crystal Palace at home. It was a 0-0 draw, literally 50-50 possession. So in this game, I see Man United being right around that 55%, maybe even 60% mark, not quite up to the level that Leicester and City had. Right. Will they break down the Watford back line? Watford have shown so many leaky issues in the back that I'd say, yes, that's why we're taking Manchester United. We're going to have – we. Oh, God, here we go. We're going to have 20 chances to score goals. And with Rashford's form, Martial got a goal, you know, this uh, last week. I think Man United are more likely to win the game than they are to draw or lose this game. And plus, Watford can't score a goal. Who the hell is going to score for Watford? So, if United can keep the clean sheet and pop in one or two of these goals, it should be an easy win. Yeah, and and again, that's why I've been anti-Watford for most of the season. This is a team that you can score goals on, and this is a team that can't score on the other side. So, you don't really have to worry too much about losing 2-1. Put it this way. I never worry when I have a bet against Watford that I'm going to lose a 2-1. I'm more worried that it's going to wind up as like a 0-0 or 1-1 draw. But, man, you just have so much more talent. I, I, I can't see them not grabbing a goal at some point in this game. And, really, I think that's all they need. You grab, oh, and- one, goal, yeah, you grab one goal against this Watford team, there's a really good chance you're going to wind up walking away with this with the win. And, Again, at minus 125, I'm seeing minus 127 on DraftKings, but in that same, you know, that same range, basically. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think that's a pretty good number for us to take. So I- I'm very interested in going, uh, going that way. Um, so those are the three that you talked about, but you said there might be a fourth. So that's do I have spring- to pull it out of you? What's the fourth? What, was that the sprinkle? Sprinkle the money line. Sprinkle okay. the three-way line on Burnley if you're feeling up for it. Um, they're relatively healthy. The only question mark is JBG, Goodmanson. He adds – marginal percentage in the advantage of Burnley. If he doesn't play, it's the same team that they've been rolling out for the last four or five weeks. So like I said, they haven't been in great form, but with all of the injuries, especially Nathan Ake in the back there for Bournemouth, uh, I really like Burnley to win that game. Chris Wood just cannot stop scoring goals. He's a big donkey. He's not good at soccer, but he's huge and he's aggressive in the box and he gets his head on it and scores goals. It's awesome. Yeah, and they're plus 200. So that's a pretty nice little money line to sprinkle a little something on there. Um, Just a little sprinkle. Yeah, even if you're doing like, you know, if if your typical bet's like 100 bucks, if you throw another 50 on that, you know, you could walk away making $250 on this game or something like that, putting it in your pocket. And uh, 
you know, paying for some of those Christmas presents. Or and that's another one, Benny, where Christmas. you can get down on the draw, no bet pregame. And then mm -hmm. if you have NBC goal, which is unbelievable value for the money and you're watching that game and you're seeing Burnley is pressing the action, then go ahead and hit it there. Cause that plus plus one ninety. if there's no goals in the first 30 minutes, 35 minutes, which is very possible could then jump up to plus 250, 270, just depending upon how the game flow goes. So if you don't want to hit a pregame, just get your money down on that draw no bet and then hit it in game. Yeah, I actually like that idea. I think I'll take the draw no bet before on the preflop. And then, hope, again, hopefully in 30 minutes in the game, you see that Burnley, the flow has been going their way and it looks like they're threatening. And if you can still get a bigger number than, you know, plus 200, plus 190, which is what we're seeing now, that could be really nice to take in game. So I like that. Um, anything else you want to add here before we sign off? No, we, um, I had a, a special guest on the podcast this week, the Talking Soccer Pie, which you can find on iTunes and on our website. But on iTunes, just uh, search Elite Fantasy, and that'll pop up there. Numbers are off the charts. I'm so excited for, uh, for everyone tuning in, and it sounds like they're enjoying the podcast. But it was Pew Pew Pew, the number two ranked wow. soccer DFS player in the world. Yep. Pretty sharp guy. We talked about some of these managerial changes coming up. So if you haven't yet, go check that out. And, of course, you can find me on Twitter at DukeDFS. Yeah, I actually know him a little bit. He's, uh, he's a good dude, and you're right. He is very sharp, especially when it comes to, uh, you know, fantasy soccer. He, he's one of the best out there and takes down a lot of the big tournaments and a lot of money when it comes to the uh, soccer DFS side. You know, I meant to mention it to him, but he was the first person I blocked from taking my head-to-heads on DraftKings. I, I wouldn't – I don't blame you. I wouldn't doubt it. I, you know, I, I think more often than not, we just end up splitting slates, but I'm not going to pay DraftKings the juice for he and I to go back and forth, so mm -hmm. why bother? Yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, I've done that with a bunch of guys who I'm friends with in, uh, in NBA and NFL too. I mean, it's not, that, it's not that you're afraid to lose to them, but if the two of you end up winning every other week, then the only real winner in the end is DraftKings or Fandle, wherever you're <laughs> We playing. get to the end of the year, I'm up 100 bucks, but I've, you know, I've lost $600 in, in fees or something. Yeah, you know? and rake. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the rake gets you every time, man. That's the way it goes. So anyway, this has been another episode of the Opening Line Soccer Edition. For Duke, I'm Benny, signing off at EliteSportsBetting.com.